to an area um, where you had to get the permission of the local gangs. Mm -hmm. And then after the sermon, the local gangs... Do you have to pay them to do that? Um, no, you, sometimes, yes. So, and um, then we, they approached us and they said, okay, we have now two options. Either we're going to uh, kidnap you or we're going to stone you. And at that time, I was like, wow, well, what shall we do? And Was this after you preached? Um, after the preaching. So they didn't so, like your preaching? Yeah, I think they didn't like it. Many people got saved, but you could see they were full of drugs. You know, um, yeah, if they're full of drugs under the influence of alcohol, the devil, devil doesn't like that. No, that's right. And um, yeah, so we had to run away. We had to rush to our car and they were shaking the car. And <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Kingdom Heirs, where faith meets business, inspiring the kingdom-minded entrepreneurs. Today, I've got the very special privilege of having with me Valdemar Bershaminski from Germany. Welcome. Thank, Thank you for being here. Yeah, it's a privilege. Thank you for having me. Uh, so we have uh, our, our guest is coming from, is it Hamburg, Germany, the yeah. a village close to uh, yeah. close by so i'm living close to hamburg i worked in hamburg hamburg is a big town almost two million inhabitants but i'm from a small town very close to hamburg excellent yeah. so you are a evangelist crusader yes is what we would say yeah. uh you've you've visited you've been of you've been 60 different countries mm -hmm. uh you've been holding crusades now 12 years mm -hmm. part of yeah, full-time nine for nine years for now. nine years yes. okay and so you've um you've You've been a part of the Reinhard Bunke uh, ministry, the Equip and Send through Christ for All the Nations. Yeah, I was trained um, by that ministry, but also by different ministries, also by Billy Graham ministries as well. So um, different, uh, different evangelists. Okay. So, yeah. You know, there's not there's not a lot of crusade evangelists out there. Mm. There's really not. That's true. And so we, we're, I've been talking to some friends of mine about this. We held an event last night here in Corpus Christi, yeah. uh, which was very special that you joined us for. And, and mm -hmm. um, it was kind of our kickoff for Kingdom Air uh, events, which yes. I've been wanting to do for a year now. Yeah. Our channel is nearly a year old. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been faithfully doing this, uh, creating content now as creators. Wow. Uh, I think September will be our one year anniversary. Is that correct, Michaela? Michaela's in the back with the headphones on. And she's nodding her head with a, yeah. So we've been we've been doing this about a year. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, I wanted to bring to our our listening audience is the importance of being um, mission focused, mm -hmm. right? You know, obviously know we are our content is very business. We talk about business. We talk about family. Mm -hmm. We talk about community. Yeah. We talk about kingdom of God and how it all collides together mm -hmm. and how it's very intentional living. Living. So from your perspective. Uh, what you can bring to us that I'm hoping for is tell us tell us how and why because I know you had a you had a regular job mm. right uh, how and why uh, you've decided to be a full-time evangelist and what yeah. that looks like because I don't think that's an easier job per se sure but I've, it's got to be a lot more rewarding yeah so tell us a little bit about your background yeah so first when I was younger I worked for the bank in the banking business and um, then I transitioned and I worked for the police uh, for 12 years and um, during that time I did crusades next to my job in Germany we have six weeks of vacation I know in America it's different six <laughs> weeks stop talking about yeah. that everybody <laughs> don't give your guys six weeks vacation we feel yeah. like they might never come back yeah, yeah. So come to <laughs> Germany <laughs> yeah that's they, they would love for us to go to Germany we, oh. we Americans are workhorses oh. we are workhorses for the most part depending yeah. on what part of America you're coming yeah. from but we're typically we like to work yeah and during that time I did crusades so I took almost all of my vacation Wow. And I went to uh, different countries and preached, held uh, big mass crusades. And um, two years ago, I um, decided to become a full-time missionary, a full-time evangelist. So I transitioned. Um, yeah, it was not easy because um, to do that, um, yeah, you need funds. Of course. Um, you need a big network. So, um, yeah, but it was still successful. The first seven years, I did it next to my job. So I would like to encourage everyone um, um, who is right now working in the normal nine to five job you can still do something for god don't think you are yeah. less small missionary you no know, but god can use you in your job um you can still go on mission trips that's right you can be a witness for christ at um in your local stores um everywhere where you go you are a missionary that's well said because we carry the mission of christ yes uh, i'm reminded of what christ 
did on earth. And if we're called Christians, if we mm. call ourselves a Christian, it means we're Christ-like right. or little Christs. Mm. The word yeah. was, the name was derogatory in the beginning. Mm. Uh, we've taken an affection to the name now is that we are little Christs. Yes. And the, the concept of that is what did Christ do? Mm. Christ came and he preached the good news yeah. that God so loved the world that he yeah. sent his son. That is the good news sure. that we can be forgiven. Yeah. He taught people about the kingdom of God. Mm. Yeah. He talked about how spiritual things. He taught them about the spiritual yeah. realm. He taught them all around us. Talk about faith. Talk about how mm. faith works and activates. Yeah. And then he taught and then he taught to pray. Mm. And he prayed for people that yeah. they might recover. Yeah. So if we're Christ like, mm. that should not be a Sunday thing. Yeah. That should be a every moment of the day thing. It's true. We have to be Monday Christians and not Sunday Christians. That's good. Yeah. So Jesus did preaching, <coughs> teaching, and healing, the three things. And I believe, especially as evangelists, we have to put an emphasis on that. There are many evangelists, they're just preaching, um, also not teaching or not praying for the sick, not praying for deliverance because right. they're scared of. Um, <coughs> they're saying, oh, <coughs> what if I pray and nothing is going to happen and everyone is going to look at me and I will look at like a fool. But Jesus did that and he, Jesus even prayed sometimes twice. So um, there for the was, same person, yeah, for the same person. There was yeah. this guy and Jesus prayed for her, and he saw some trees and then Jesus prayed again. So um, if you don't see immediate success, just keep doing it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So with your <clears throat> with your walk and deciding now you're married. Mm, now yes. you, you and your wife have been married for for nine years. Nine years. Yeah. And is she also involved, or how does what's her what's her what's what's your what's the agreement? Yeah, my wife has a normal full time job, so uh, she's my biggest financial supporter. She has an average job, so we were living from her salary. So. I'm always joking <laughs> if I need like five dollars, I say, please, get I, can I get five dollars? And uh, <laughs> she gives it to me, you know. I love it. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we decided so <clears throat> that I will step down from my job and um, be a full time. So she gave you full, she gave you full support. Yeah, she gave me full support. So That's major. Yeah, I'm so happy for that. I'm happy that I have a wife who is supporting me. Um, she also tries to come to the mission field with me. So most of the time she's there. I love um, it. But um, I fly in first um, and I organize some things and she most of the time she comes in for the big event. That's awesome. So that's what let's talk about that. So, you know, a lot of things I don't think people understand for the most part. They think business, they think business is business and, and yeah. separate from church. And yeah. but in many respects, the, the work Mm. of of evangelizing or the work of building a church yeah there's so much structure to it it's kind of run similarly to a business not sure. so much profit and loss and balance sheets and so much yeah. but there's so much activity that takes place yeah and coordinating and delegating and, mm. and all of that and yeah. finances to make sure they're spent wisely we talked about this last night you and yeah. i um and the value of money and what can it produce for winning souls yes. to Christ, right? And making sure you're 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 tight with that and mm. you're intentional with that. Yeah. Not flippant. Ah, yeah. money. Ah, people gave us money, we're just going to we're going to blow it. Sure. Right? And so I think that's uh, integrity and accountability mm. attached to the funds that people contribute. Yeah. Um, but thinking about the efforts you're sharing with me of all the you've held seven crusades so far this year? Yeah, in the last 12 months. What yes. what were in the 12 months? So what yeah. were the, some of those countries? So, for example, I preached in Liberia. Liberia was a country um, where they had civil war. Um, we heard very horrible stories. So I really wanted to go into that country because I heard stories where they boiled people alive, where they mm -hmm. cut their hands off, where pastors were killed. And I went to, into a city <coughs> um, that was really affected by war. So they had child soldiers. And um, yeah, we preached the gospel. Wow. And many people got saved. And then we went to Guinea. We preached in Guinea. Guinea has over 90% Muslims. And um, yes, yeah, so we had to cross literally the river. So we went to and through the water and the water was up to our hips. So we had to carry all our equipment um, on some boats. So this was very adventurous and we preached there. And on the next Sunday in this Muslim country, we had over 800 new people in the local churches. So people are sometimes asking, OK, what's the fruit of uh, crusade evangelism? Yes, let's talk um, about that. And there we had 800 new people in the local church in a Muslim country with over 90% Muslims. I once had a crusade in Brazil as well, and five years ago, and one pastor approached me and um, or a crusade evangelist told me this story, what happened afterwards. So there was one pastor, he planted 34 churches 34 after churches. our gospel crusade. And oh my that's goodness. Amazing. And these, these, would be, these would be in 
the jungle. These yeah, would be in the bush. This these was would in be Brazil, and um, yeah, in so the forest. That, yeah, in towns, in and, towns. and unreached uh, areas. So I always try to go to places where the gospel is not very well advanced. So think about it. One, so one man. Yeah. Here's the word of God. Yeah. He gets inspired. Yeah. He's a pastor, and, yeah. and a lot of times he's a pastor. Oh, he must have gone to a theology school. Mm -hmm. He must have gone through all of this. Yeah. Sometimes that's not the case. Yeah. Sometimes it's the one man yeah. that showed up faithfully responded to the word yeah. of God. He was diligent and faithful. Mm. And that's what the community looks to is saying, that's my pastor. Yeah. He loves God. He loves Jesus. He's always helpful and he's encouraging mm. and he's wanting to see me do well. Yeah. He becomes nominated to become the pastor. Mm. And many, in Africa, it's like that all the time. And, and so it's something very powerful about just being the ordinary people mm. conquer so much. Yeah. For the kingdom of God, yeah. they accomplish so much, yeah. and to go out and plant thirty-four churches, yeah, after one uh, gospel event. So this is a lasting fruit, and um, yeah, we yesterday talked about that. So the cost for my last crusade were per soul, per one saved soul, were one point seven seven dollars. Can you imagine that? One point seven seven dollars. Let's break that down. So a dollar seventy-seven. Yeah. Invested. And what you're doing yeah. and the work, this is how you've tracked it. Yeah. It is what it takes to see someone accept Jesus Christ yes. as their personal Lord and Savior. Yeah. Heaven opens up and celebrates. Yeah. I mean, not many more, thousands more people heard the gospel. But, but for $1.77, last crusade, one soul got saved. That's amazing. So you can have like, um, much, much more people. Sometimes um, you have to preach the gospel to thousands of and course. only hundred people, hundreds of people respond. Yeah. But I believe... Which is amazing. Yeah. I mean, if I look from that perspective, from a business perspective, I mean, where can you get a better invest investment? I don't just see you in so $1.77 into something and one soul comes to heaven. And I think this is always the dream of every Christian that one day when we stand in front of the throne of God mm. and you can say, Jesus, do you see the person next to me, to the left and to the right? I brought them with me into the kingdom yeah. and I sowed into them. I preached to them and here it is. And I think Jesus is going to smile at us and say, well done, good, good and faithful, faithful servant. servant. Amen. That's yeah. so powerful. Yeah. I've often thought about that of all the people that would be, uh, that would make it yeah. and be, uh, walking into the kingdom. Yeah. And they'd be like, well, it's because of that person over there. Yeah. That was the one who came and told me. That was the one that I finally accepted mm. Christ. Yeah. And and then heaven opened up and, and my yeah. veil, you know, that my eyes were finally opened and I felt I experienced mm. the born again experience of yeah. life is renewed. Mm. I feel new. And and that's what Jesus talked about with Nicodemus, mm. right? In John chapter three. Yes. And so that was something very special. Mm. Uh, and so then there's also the people that sowed and watered. Mm. They watered that seed down. Yeah. And finally, there's a harvest. Yes. Right. Jesus tells us, don't pray for the harvest. Mm -hmm. Pray for the laborers. Yeah. And the harvest is ripe. Right. It's the people are few. Yeah. And sometimes we have to be the answer for our prayer. Yeah. You know, we often pray, God, send someone. But what about us? Well, I, I, I've got a lot going on. Yeah, I know. I can't exactly go right now. Yeah. But I, I have a heart to be involved. Yeah. So I say this always is a common that's a common response. Right. That people will say, Ah, yeah. I, my heart hurts for that. I want yeah. I, I pray God would bless those people. Yeah. Yeah. But where's the blessing coming from? Yeah. So I always tell when when I preach in churches and they're there are there are students, there are women in churches who have kids or they're businessmen, they're asking me, evangelists, um, I would like to be a part of that. I want to become a missionary, but how can I be a part of that? I am running a business. I have kids. I'm in school right now. I'm in college. What can I do? Do I drop it all and yeah. leave? Should I quit everything and sell my business and um, yeah, sell my car and sell my house? And they leave? want to sell the business because they're stressed yeah. out by the business. The business stresses them out. They make yeah. money, but they're stressed. Yeah. So I tell them there are three types of missionaries. First, they are the knee missionaries. And these are very, very important people. These are people who are praying. They have a call for prayer. And yeah. I, in Germany, I have a prayer group in my um, church. Most of them, they're older people in their 70s and their mm. 80s. And they're praying the for me diligently day and night. They get up at um, 3 in the morning and pray so that I can preach the gospel in very dangerous places. And Explain that real quick. Yeah. You don't tell them to get up at 3 a.m. No, I don't tell them. But So what happens? They do that. So Why? Because why, why, do you think people, why, do, why do people just do that? Um, because why wouldn't they just enjoy sleeping in? Yeah, they feel called to become a prayer warrior. They want to become a part of the mission um, call.
but because of their age maybe or because of the working situation it's not possible for them so we're talking about intercessory prayer yeah it's an intercessory prayer right now not everybody may understand intercessory prayer mm. if um someone is as an example yeah if you're about your day and mm. you're about your activities and let's say i pop into your mind yeah you can be like oh i wonder how james is doing and mm. then i'll call him later yeah or maybe it was the Holy Spirit mm. that prompted mm -hmm. my name to pop up into your mind thinking, yeah. uh, I wonder how James is done. Maybe he needs prayer right now. Yeah. Maybe he's going through something right now. Let mm. me just take a moment, yeah. pray a 30 second prayer, mm. covering, protection, provision, yeah. whatever it is, mm. whatever it is, whatever the Holy Spirit would prompt you to pray. Yeah. And now we have just engaged supernaturally mm. helping one another. Yeah. And then to find out maybe later, and then maybe you go on with your day, and that's mm, it. Yeah. Maybe you find out later, maybe you read, hey, everything all right? Mm. Yeah, you know what? Today was just really, really hard. I felt like I had an attack. I felt like mm. there was just, the, the burdens were too much. Or I just had a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. uh, literally, I was waiting for something to happen, and it mm. finally happened. Yeah. Like, oh, really? Well, I was prompted to pray at that time. That's true. Yeah. So once I preached in Nigeria, and um, this was a dangerous nation, and in Nigeria you have the... A most death when it comes to persecuted Christians. You, I thought it's Afghanistan, it's Syria, or in North Korea, but it's actually Nigeria. Wow. And uh, I preached in Nigeria, um, and then we came from the stage, and I preached in an area um, where you had to get the permission of the local gangs. Mm -hmm. And then after the sermon, the local gangs. Do you have to pay them to do that? Um, no, you sometimes yes. So and um, then we they approached us and they said, okay, we have now two options. Either we're going to uh, kidnap you or we're going to stone you. And at that time, I was like, wow, what shall we do? And Was this after you preached? Um, after the preaching. So they didn't so, like your preaching? Yeah, I think they didn't like it. Many people got <laughs> saved, but you could see they were full of drugs. You know, um, yeah, if they're full of drugs under the influence of alcohol, the devil Spirits. doesn't like that. No, that's right. And um, yeah, so we had to run away. We had to rush to our car and they were shaking the car. And I had a friend preaching at that time um, in another location. And there was one guy, he was running with a knife in his hand um, after him and he almost killed him. So he had oh to my goodness. rush into the car. He closed the door and they drove off. Um, praise God, nothing happened. But because of this, um, knee missionaries at home, they were praying diligently for me, for my safety. Yeah. At that time, I even got malaria. I was sick for three days, severely sick. And um, yeah, lying there in Nigeria in this country where it's very hot where you don't have good access to healthcare system um, yeah it's dangerous it is dangerous and because of the of my heroes um, they prayed so um, maybe what? God has called you to become a, a knee, knee missionary knee on your knees praying yes. let me ask something why would you put yourself in that danger um, are you coming from a good place yes a safe place mm. why would you put yourself yeah. in that situation can't you just send money yeah can't you just send money and just bless people? Mm -hmm. Like let uh, let the people that live there yeah. take care of the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let I them th take care of their yeah. own. Like, yeah. aren't there people in Germany here that need to hear the gospel too? Yeah. Like, why? In other words, why? Mm. Why would you go? Yeah. Is there any real reason to yeah. do that, or does it feel like it's just something you just always want to travel and you just yeah. always want to just put yourself mm. in dangerous situations? Yeah. Because you're a risk taker. Yeah. I feel called to be a foot missionary. So I'm the one who goes, um, I said to myself, I will go to the most remote, most re dangerous places. I would like to preach the gospel where the gospel is not known before. There are statistics, they're saying there are over 3 billion people who never heard the gospel, who never knew about Jesus. You can tell them that Jesus is the founder of Coca-Cola. You can tell them Jesus is, um, is female and they would believe you. So they are whole they villages. They have no idea who he is. Yeah, yeah they are whole villages they never heard about Jesus. And it's But easy. didn't but wasn't that number smaller like 30, 40 years ago? No. Or is it just that there's so many people that are yeah. still coming and going? Yeah. Be, babies being born, generations yeah. there's So the work is never finished. Yeah, the number is still increasing because we are um, we have many more people that they are born every day. So um, we as Christians, we have to go. So the work's never done. The work is never done. I mean, Billy Graham, hmm. Reinhard Bunke, yeah. these guys have done, uh, many others have done, hmm. yeah. they led millions of people to sure. Christ. Like, isn't the work finished? Um, Shouldn't no. the church just sit down now and just 
kind of coast until Jesus comes back? I think because we are living in this technology age, we have now such a big advantage. I think the gospel can be preached in our um, generation to the ends of the earth because mm. you can uh, have a video, you can have a podcast like this one, and you can reach millions of people somewhere in the jungle, yeah. in the Amazon or region. Because or cell phones are everywhere. Yeah, cell phones are everywhere. I'm sometimes very surprised. I'm in remote areas. They never heard about Jesus. Um, but they have cell phones. Uh, Isn't yeah. that strange? So wild. You know, they you have smartphones. It, you think they'd be all over. Yeah. yeah. But um, then you can just send them a video and they have access. They can hear about Jesus. Churches can be planted. and yeah. So your call is to be a foot missionary. Yes, I'm a foot missionary. And there's this is the second type. So we have the knee missionaries. We have the foot missionaries. And there are also the hand missionaries. And maybe you are a businessman. And um, the hand missionaries are people who are... Um, who are blessed with their hands. They could be creative, they can maybe cook well, or they can, maybe God has blessed them financially. Take their hands and do something with their hands. Yes. Um, bless other people, bless other ministries. They can maybe, yeah, work, build churches with their own hands. Maybe God has blessed you with creativity. Yeah. You can become a hand missionary. Don't think that you are um, smaller than the guy who actually goes into the mission field um, if you are financially sowing into something. Because um, without the funds. Yeah, without the funds. It wouldn't happen. So even Jesus, um, when he preached, there were some rich women who funded his ministry. Right. So Jesus, I mean, he could always preach, but he had to eat somehow. Of course. He had to drink. He had to need They had to pay place. people for lodging. Yeah. So these women, they traveled with Jesus. They provided... Um, they cared for him and um, they had disciples and I believe his mission was somehow funded by these people. That's right. So these were the hand missionaries. Well, the, the Bible talks about they had a, uh, Judas had the change, he had yeah. the purse, the money bag. Mm. Well, they were obviously taking in offerings sure. or something was happening there, sure. right? Um, Judas was a thief, mm. however. Yeah. Right. So there's there's always that mentality. Cause there's people that say, well, no, people, they just take that money and they steal it and they do. Yeah. They buy themselves jets and yeah. they... Right. Yeah. You have that whole level of skepticism, yeah. which is unfortunate mm. because the reality is the work still needs to be done. Sure. The work still needs to get done and money is still going to exchange hands. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. People with integrity like yourself who mm. are very intentional with the resources mm. that come in. Yeah. Right. And you understand people from like business people like myself, you yeah. and I have talked about this. I want to be very intentional where I sow my money. Mm. I don't give back. Yeah. I don't give back. Yeah. What are you talking about? You don't give back. Yeah. I didn't steal anything. Yeah. And what I have stolen when I was younger, mm. I paid restitution I, and I gave it back. Yeah. The Bible talks about giving back yeah. what you've stolen. That's true. For us as Christians and as business owners and people who have the hands, as you call mm -hmm. it, and we want to sow into, yeah. so we want to put good seed in the ground true. and see it get watered and see it get harvested yeah. for the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to be very intentional with who we so yeah. into yeah. right i mean it's all part of that sure so hearing the results mm -hmm. of what takes place yeah. is very encouraging you're like yeah. wow we gave 100 bucks and and we saw 10 people come to christ yeah that's a big deal sure that changes generations yeah yeah it's the it's the generation it's not just them mm. it's their household yeah. yeah and it's their children and then their grandchildren will know the saving grace yeah. the, the 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 knowledge of saving grace of jesus christ it's pretty powerful mm. Yeah, I, I totally understand your concern as a businessman. I mean, you look from a business perspective and you want to know, okay, if I put $10 into it, what will I get out from that? And I sometimes post pictures at the locations where I'm at. Um, I just came back um, from Africa, from Uganda. I had just a bucket as my shower. Um, no AC, you know, it was very hot. I had your over- Your jet wasn't, your jet yeah, wasn't I flew, fueled up? Yeah, I flew just economy <laughs> class. I had over 40 mosquito bites on my body in a malaria area. Um, sometimes I don't have food, it's hot. I'm just sleeping on, on the ground. In Cameroon, I just slept on concrete floor. Um, there is no luxury at all. So when I post that pictures, um, I try to have very, I try to lower the cost as much as I can to um, to say to bring people to Jesus for one dollar, for two dollars, so it's that huge. you can have a good return on your money that yeah. you are invested in. I think Christ sees that, yeah, and He's like, okay, this is good. Yeah, it's not wasteful, not slothful. I think that's yeah. that's a big part of that's a big part of for all of us, right? Yeah. We all have waste. We all waste. Yeah. We wa we waste resources. Mm. We, we already do that. 
So I think even if we took from the perspective of um, sewing in, I talk a lot about uh, go out, provide a good service, yeah. provide a, a, and take care of your customers, serve your customers faithfully because we are mm. servants and we're getting paid as servants. Mm. Provide a good income to supply for your family's needs, supply mm -hmm. well for your family's needs. Sow into your local church, mm. tithe, trust God, yeah. trust him, test and see that mm. I am good. Yeah. You will know God, God is, he is, when we give what his, what is his back to him, mm -hmm. he brings it back to us again. Right. So when we sow the 10%, he brings the other 90%. Sure. It just, it keeps flowing and that number yeah. keeps growing. Mm. Uh, but then sow into projects, sow into missionaries, sow mm. into evangelism outreaches, sow into things that populate, that depopulate hell mm. and populate heaven. Yeah. It's a real thing, yeah. right? And so that's one of the things that we think are very, very important here with Kingdom Heirs is to mm. sow back into uh, things like you're doing. Mm. And so we've had several other guests on the show as well that, that are doing that already and, yeah. and what it looks like for them in their life. But we waste so much from a business standpoint. Mm. There's so much waste. Mm. Oh, what's that over there? Oh, it, it's, it's left over from that other project. And I said, well, that's like a three, $400 thing. It's been sitting there for three months. Wow. What are we going to do with that? Sure. Ah, nothing. It's just waste. Sure. 300 bucks. Yeah. I hate that. Mm. Uh, from my time being spent in South Africa and Swaziland and Mozambique, the amount of time I've spent there mm. to have warm water doesn't exist. Right. To have luxuries, they don't, air conditioning, they don't exist. Electricity, mm. they don't exist. Yeah. So I've, I've, I've experienced that firsthand. We've raised our daughters with that experience. That causes me to say, I don't want to waste money. Mm. I don't, because I know what it can, what it could do to improve yeah. someone's life. Right. Just from a second, a primary and a secondary mm. needs position, yeah. right? So I think that's very important for all of us to kind of see that no, there are some frauds out there. Mm. Absolutely, there's people that are just, yeah, yeah, they're they're just they're they're using and abusing yeah. the system. Sure. But then there's the the genuine people. Mm as you've just described some of your experiences and people sure. I know as well, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's not easy. Yeah. It's rough, That's but true. the joy yeah. that comes from seeing people get touched by God, it's true. the blind eyes are open, mm. the lame are walking right. as a miracle and as a sign mm. that no, God does see us. Sure. He does see us in our pain. He sees us in our lack. He sees us in our hardship. Mm. But yeah. if we keep him at this distance, he's not, going to be able to come through that. Mm. He's a gentleman. Right. He stands at the door and knocks, mm. waiting for us to open up the wow. door. Wow. Right? Sure. And so a lot of us have that experience. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just doing my thing and, mm. and I'm, I'm busy and I'm taking care of my family. I'm putting food on the table. Yeah. And I love Jesus. Okay, that's good. That's good. But there's more. Mm. Yeah. What else are we doing? Yeah, coming back to that point, like wasting resources. I have just a couple of weeks ago had my crusade in Uganda. So we used even posters and banners from previous crusades. So we just put another date on it. Mm -hmm. So we always try to be very, very intentional with our resources. We try not to waste money. Um, so I know if someone is investing hundred dollars, that could be a grandma and she had to, that's from her pension and she's yeah, not rich. hundred dollars from her pension, that's a lot. It's true. So um, I know that. I know the value of one dollar very well. And I'm not from a rich family. I had to work hard for my money. Um, so if someone invests one dollar, I know um, I have to get the most out of that one dollar. Yeah. So, it's um, being a good steward because when you're faithful with little, yeah. there's Luke chapter 16, verse 10, yeah. faithful with little, be faithful with much. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that's a big part of it. Yeah. You know, let me ask you this. Um, some, I've seen some photos. Mm. Um, kind of, I love the array. M Michaela will put some photos up uh, mm. of this as well. But some of your crusades, you've had as few as maybe, what, a couple hundred people show up? Oh, yeah. I and had thousands of people, yeah. And then up to <laughs> thousands of people. You've yeah. had as many. Which place was it that you had nearly 40,000 people? Um, this was in Ethiopia. We had Ethiopia. Over, yeah, over 40,000 people. And um, yeah, so thousands. I preached to thousands of people, but also to the one. So. I don't need the big crowd. I'm happy if we have big crowds, but I also preach to the one. So just um, I came back to this place from a hotel and at the lobby, I saw one girl. She um, had neck pain. She was turning the head like that. And I said, what happened to your neck? And she said, oh, I have neck pain all the time. And she said, 
could I pray for you? And I just put my hands on her neck and she was healed this morning, ah! just a couple of two hours ago. Oh my goodness. So I don't need the big crowd. That's why I gave you extra time at the yeah. hotel. I, <laughs> I said, oh man, I'm running. I said, he'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. He'll be praying for somebody. Yeah. Somebody's going to get touched. Yeah. <laughs> By so, God. Amen. Yeah. We as evangelists, we have to preach the one, but also to the masses. So Jesus preached to Nicodemus, the one. Yes. But he also had the Sermon on the Mount where yes, he, he reached thousands of people. So even Jesus had crusades. Yes, he did. And so Jesus was a crusade evangelist. Yes, and I love that. By God's grace, um, yeah, we had big, big crusades. Um, I was part of a crusade where we almost had over 100,000 people. And there we had to yeah, train or we had a list of 30,000 volunteers. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine that being responsible for 30,000 workers? And then you have to think like a business owner. OK, how do I train this 30,000 people? To accomplish the goal. To accomplish the goal. And uh, you have a list, you, know, you invite them, you train them. And so um, it's a big task. Let's so, talk about this real quick, just before I forget. Yeah. You have that many people show up, hmm. which takes them days to get. Many cases, these are remote areas. It takes yeah. them days to get yeah. there. So your events are actually multiple days. Yeah. A week long, three, four days, like yeah. typically. It depends on the country. Sometimes um, in South America, it's more like two, three days. In Africa, it's like five. Um, yeah. And part of that is because of travel. Yeah, it's because of travel. People um, walk for days to yeah, get there. Yeah, they work for days to attend the, attend the event. And I preached once in a country of uh, Tanzania. And there was uh, the crusade was already over. So sh one lady came at the very last day, at the last evening where we are all, everything was turned down. and. Then she asked, oh, the crusade is already over. Oh. I came for a walk for such a long time and um, I need healing. And um, I said, can you pray for us? And can you pray for me? And then a worker prayed for her and she got healed and God touched her. And she had to walk for a long distance. She came when everything was done already. But God and you didn't turn heart. and you didn't turn her away. Ah, yeah. It's all gone. No, we'll no. be back in five years. No, so Jesus cares for the one. He loves the yeah. one. He's a, and we are that one. Yes. We need to always remember that we are the one. Yes. We are that lost sheep. Yeah. Right? We're, yeah. We are that one. Mm. Whatever place in our life, he loves us that much. It's true. Right? That's powerful. Mm. You know, talking about um, uh, why you're doing this, we're all called. You've got the, the knee, mm. you've got the hand, and you've got the feet. Yeah. But without all three, yeah. you, can't, you can't accomplish the mission through um, with we talked about the follow up mm. of all the effort. I think some people are skeptical of mm. big events sure. because they say uh, as Christian people are, yeah. are skeptical. Mm. Big events is because they say, well, all that and the evangelist blows into town. And he blows out of town mm. and then we're left trying to yeah. figure it all out. So we talked about a follow up mm. and how you follow up with these people. Yeah. And, and talk talk to me about that a little bit. What is that? What's that look like? Mm. So we have follow up booklets and we hand them out to the new converts who accepted Jesus Christ as their savior. And on the last page of that booklet, they have to write down their name, their address. And then we divide the last page into two pieces. So one piece goes back to the local pastor. He g receives the address, the name, and his um, uh, task is to visit that person, to call that person, to invite that person to the local church. Mm. And we get the second piece where we count the numbers. So um, we get like a big, big stack of, um, yeah, where the new convert signs with his name, with a date, and the pastors get the second piece. And so his obligation is to visit the new convert, to um, invite him into the local church. And so, um, for example, when we preached uh, in Cameroon, we partnered with um, a local Bible school. So they had this graduates, um, they just graduated from Bible school and we preached and on Sunday we bought land for three hundred dollars, uh, just a big piece of land for three hundred dollars. Yeah. And then we built some wooden structures, put a simple roof on it, and in one um, congregation we had over hundred fifty new people. They came to the for the very first time um, to see their new pastor. The pastor didn't know the congregation. The congregation didn't know their pastor, wow. and they looked for the first time each other into their eyes. And um, so, and we did that on several locations. So just buying land for $300, putting up a simple wooden structure and planting churches, partnering with the local Bible schools. Mm. So the graduates become local pastors. Um, so my goal is always to leave something behind. 
Um, I don't want to come like the evangelist with a big helicopter, you know, then have some air, you know, spreading and then leaving, you know. I want to leave something. I want to leave a legacy and so that people will get saved. I want to do something for the next generation. So in 100 years, when someone will come by, that there is a local church. Yeah, that they will praise Jesus and reach others for Christ. That's powerful. Yeah. It's talking about mission and having a mission for ourselves. Sure. Right? There's um, a lot of people have a mission statement for their business. Mm. They have a mission statement for a vision statement, they yeah. have core values. Yeah. Uh, Megan and I, years ago, I think 2005, mm. just almost 20 years ago, wow. we created a mission statement for our family. Mm. We created core values mm -hmm. for our family. And at that time, we had three little babies. We had a huge heart for missions mm. and seeing the lost get, get found, mm. right? The lost sheep coming get, get, coming back, the prodigal son returning. And it was just, it's mm. just, we read missionary books and the heroes of the faith to our children when they were young. And, wow. and I, so I, I, I read those books and I'm like, man, the, I just love these books. I shared some of those. And you're at my house yesterday. Yeah. I shared my library with you. I'm like, look yeah. at these books and look at these. And, and we yeah. get in every book. I'm like, oh, I remember this and I remember this part of it. And it's like, mm. and uh, last night you you mentioned a couple of them, Nate Saint and mm. was it Elliot? Uh, yeah. You're talking about and their lives as seeds in the ground and mm. and how people came to know Christ and how it changed yeah. civilizations. Like it changed their the people group. Mm. And I I, sh I was saying to you, I was like, man, I want a book written after my life. Mm. I would love if my life was uh, so intentional mm. that it, it it's a good read. Like it's yes. memorable. Like I made impact for the kingdom of God. Mm. And why does that matter? Mm. Why does that matter? Then, yeah. man, these guys are talking about the kingdom of God all the time. Like, what does that mean? Like, I've got Jesus. Like, I'm, I'm a Christian. Right. But what do you mean kingdom of God? What is that? Like, mm. unless you've experienced the born again if you've if you've never had the born again experience, mm. you will everything we're talking about is foolishness. Mm. But if you're born again, mm. look it up, John chapter three, I think it's one through sixteen through seventeen. He's talking to Nicodemus. Right. Unless a man be born again, he will not he will not see the kingdom of God. He will not see the, he will not be is it he will not be born he will not yeah see the kingdom of God. Right. And so in that. I had that born again experience when I was 18, hmm. but yet I was, I was a Catholic and I was a, a practicing Catholic and hmm. I was in church every Sunday and Catholic school and, and I, and I was, I had to pray and, and I did everything that yeah. I did everything that I was taught to do. Mm -hmm. Right. But I, I wasn't spiritually alive yet. Mm. That's true. I was, I was physically alive, but I wasn't spiritually alive yet. Right. So when Megan, my wife introduced me to Jesus Christ, mm. who is alive, mm. not who is dead on the cross still. Mm -hmm. Most most people see Jesus on the cross right. still. Right. They don't see the open grave, empty yeah. grave, the empty yeah. tomb. Right. Jesus is alive. He sits at the right hand of the Father. Mm. He is alive and he wants us to experience life eternally. It's true. Not death. So we're born into death through mm. Adam. We're born into death. Yeah. yeah. So what I believe, so we as Christians, so first we have to come to Calvary. We have to um, be reborn. We have to be born again. Yeah. Um, Jesus Christ has to live in our heart. We have to receive forgiveness, salvation, healing. But then we also have to continue to Pentecost. We have to, a lot of Christians, they just stay at Calvary. And they say, thank you, Jesus, for my salvation. Amen. But I believe there is even more. So there is Pentecost. I'm yeah. a spiritual believer. And I believe um, the day of Pentecost, um, people received um, the, the power, the power, the Holy Spirit. The helper. So, and Jesus says, stay. Yeah. I'm going to send a helper to right. you. He's going to be your teacher, your comforter. Right. Especially as an evangelist, you have to have that Pentecost experience. You need it. Don't stay. Calvary is very important. Salvation is very important. It begins there, yeah, but it but doesn't we, finish yeah, there. It doesn't finish. So we have to write the book of Acts. So it, the book of Acts is not finished. And they left it, has, it unfinished. Yeah, so it was 28 chapters, but every one of us writes the 29th chapter oh, of our own life. That's really powerful. So let's write, continue the book of Acts. You, you shared with me and a group last night, which I think was really powerful, 
the four calls. Mm, yeah. I think it's important you share that with mm. us here. There's the four calls. There's people listening saying, if you've hung on this long, I yeah. love I love the fact, God bless you guys. We love the fact you're still listening. Mm. But those who are listening, there's four calls right. that we hear in our life. Yeah. Will you share this with us? Sure. So the first call is from heaven. So Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel. Jesus went to heaven and he encouraged the believer. He urged them to preach the gospel wherever they go. And they said, these signs are going to follow those who believe. And I believe Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God and still saying, please do it. Fulfill my job. I mean, you are a business owner. For example, if you leave your business for um, six man months for a sabbatical, you would put someone in charge and say, okay, you are now the main guy and you will take care of all the other co-workers so that they will fulfill the job so that my con company will run well. Yes. And you say in six months, I will come back as a business owner and then I will ask you, what did you do with my yes. finances? Yes. And that's exactly what Jesus is going to do. Yes. And so he's sitting there at the right hand of God and I believe still saying, go into all the world. This is the first calling. It's from heaven. The second calling is from hell. So. Um, there is a story of the rich man and Lazarus. So the rich man had everything. And then you have Lazarus. Um, he was um, living outside on the street. He didn't have nice food, nice clothes, no friends. But one day they met in eternity. And then this rich man realized, I have five brothers. And he said, Father Abraham, please send someone to my five brothers so that they will not come to this place. And there is actually a call from hell for evangelism. So. People in hell are crying out for evangelists. For their own for their own family. For their own family, for their, their own friends, boss, please. Co-workers, for their neighbors. And if you think about that, wow. I mean, Jesus is urging us to go, but people in hell are also pleading with us and saying, please go and preach the gospel. Yeah. I had <clears throat> I had a neighbor, so he, um, he was a good friend of my family. And this neighbor was not a Christian. My father invited him. Um, to join a church, to come to maybe for Christmas, for Easter. And he treated me very well. When I was younger, he gave me gifts and so on. Um, but um, he said, oh, no, you can go to church. I will not do that. And so one day he got sick. And um, then my, our wife told us, his wife told us how he died. So he was lying on his deathbed. And the wife, uh, he told us that he is seeing the devil standing next to his bed. Mm and um, waiting for his death. And he was so shocked and he said to his wife, he was not a believer at it's all. It's the spirit of death waiting. Yeah, he was not a believer at all. And he said, the devil is standing there and waiting for me. And he was an atheist. And then he told his wife, please do something. So his wife went to the local shop, bought some wooden angels, put it next to that. And he said, it's not helping, they're still there. And that's how my neighbor died. I mean, that's not a mm. fantasy story. That's my Reality. neighbor. And so there's this call from hell for people crying out. So the first call was from heaven. The second call from hell. Third calling is from inside. Paul um, said, woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. Paul had this burning in his heart. Yeah. Um, we as Christians, we, we have to go out. We need that burning in our heart. Maybe you're listening and um, you feel that burning. Maybe you're called to to a nation. Maybe you're called to a special neighborhood. Maybe you're called to go to a city or maybe you're called just to be a worship leader or um, for kids ministry and you have that burning in your yeah. heart. Yes. This is the calling from inside. So I would like to encourage you. Do something. Respond. Fulfill your calling. Paul did that and he preached the gospel all over. I believe he even went to Spain and yeah, he might go to Spain and preach there. So the third calling was from inside. First from heaven, hell, inside. And now the last one is from outside. So Paul, Paul was sleeping. His wish was to go to Asia. And he made plans. Maybe he had some context there. But then he had this vision in the night um, where a man approached him and said, come to Europe, come to um, Macedonia and help us. So Paul went, preached in Europe. You know, Alexander the Great, he went into the total opposite direction. He went to Asia. But Paul went into the other way. He went yeah. to Europe and conquered Europe for Jesus. Yes, Alexander did. the Great conquered Asia, but Paul went into the other direction and conquered um, Europe for Jesus. So maybe you are also receiving an outward call. Maybe your pastor approached you and said, hey, we need help in that campus. We want to have a house church, cell group in that area. Please help us. 
maybe there is need in kids ministries there's maybe need for an outreach group and yeah. someone approached you and yeah. begged you please help me i think this is a call from outside and paul followed and um yeah if you do that god is going to bless you and he is going to use ordinary people i'm just an ordinary guy i'm i'm an ordinary preacher but what i realized is god loves availability if you're available the disciples were total normal people i believe they, they were. were teenagers yes and god used teenagers and to turn the world upside down yeah so just be available for god listen to the call from outside from inside from heaven mm. from hell mm. and you can be a witness for christ this is powerful mm. so powerful we don't have to sit back yeah we don't have to sit on the shelf and say, well, I had a call years ago, but now I'm married yeah. and I have children. And right. Now I can't go do that. Mm. I think the reality is, is that the calling is still there. Yeah. It might look a little different today, mm. but if we don't ever respond to it, yeah. it will look like it's distant in the past, in the rear right. view. And you're going to, you're missing out on the adventures, mm. the adventure, yeah. but living on adventure with God is awesome mm. i'm still living on it mm. and i don't plan for it ever to end i don't want it to ever end the yeah. adventure and so i think that's that's part of where if if the people that are that are hearing that and saying man but i feel like you know uh can you know just starting with the simple thing you're at the drive through and man jesus loves you mm. thank you so much yeah you don't just just begin getting outside of our skin, mm. getting outside of our comfort zone, yeah, and begin that evangelistic. Did you know God loves you? Did yeah. you know God sees you? Mm. Yeah. And what are they going to say to you? Yeah. Oh, stop it! Like, what yeah. are they going to say to you? Right. Oh, thank you. We when somebody sneezes in Germany, they say Gesundheit. Yeah, they say Gesundheit. Yeah. Uh, like, and here like, we say God bless you. Wow. Well, yeah. God bless you. Wow. Well, people appreciate. And they say, oh, thank you. Mm. Yeah. There's there's appreciation for people that just want to, oh, it's a blessing, mm. right? Yeah. So I think that's part of people just beginning mm. to begin right. getting outside of their comfort zone yeah. and praying for someone, like sure. you said. Yeah. If you see someone who's, got, who's constantly doing this, mm. hey, is it okay if I pray for you? Yeah. Well, take that moment. It's sure. a risk. They yeah. might say no, and that's okay. You say, sure. well, well, God bless you either way. I'm, you know. But or this, yeah, mm. you know what? Yeah, everybody is looking for an act of kindness. Mm. We all want to receive an act of kindness. We, when we receive an act of kindness, we're like, oh, that was great. Right. Oh, God does see me. Right. Right. Yeah. And so that's part of the experience that we all can have is bringing goodness and kindness to other people's lives. Mm, sure. On the behalf of God. Right. Yeah. So right now I'm on this hundred day challenge to share Christ every day with someone. So right now I'm on day 30 and I preach to big masses, but also try to reach the one. So there are so many ways to to approach people. Sometimes you are standing in the line and there's maybe this person saying, oh my God, the line is so long. And then I said, oh, you're believing in God. Ah! That's so good. <laughs> I was like, well, me? No. That's, ah. I just said, oh, my God. And I often do that. If people say, Absolutely. oh, my God. It's it's like, oh. Obviously, they're inviting God into the situation. Let's yes. have a conversation. Yeah. And so that's my starting point to share Christ. I love it. So next time, if you someone is saying, oh, my God, say, wow, wow, you're believing in Jesus. God, that's good. So people <laughs> would, um, you know, some of the environments, people are cussing Jesus' name. Yeah. You know, like, you know, Jesus Christ. And they mean it as a cuss. Yes. And I'll be like, oh, you're praying. Mm. Oh, let's pray together. What do we want right. to pray about? You know, like, yes. obviously they're upset about something. Right. There's, in other words, when we bring humor, mm. we were talking about before we started our, this, uh, this podcast, we were talking about humor. If we can laugh our way into heaven, yes. oh my goodness, <laughs> life would be so much True. more enjoyable. Right. It doesn't need to be stale. Mm. Life does not need to be stale. Being a Christian is actually fun. It's right. adventurous. Mm. And if you're not having fun with the people you're around, mm. look for a new group of Christians that you can spend time with, that sure. you want to go out. Maybe they're Debbie Downers. Maybe they're people that just want to, everything is just so bad. Mm. They suck life out of you. They suck joy out of you. Yeah. Right. Get around people that are spirit filled and mm. they're a little, they're a little more lap, you know, happy clappy. We used to call them the happy. Hey, they're a little more joyful, mm. they're a little more joy because they're experiencing God's love. Mm. They're experiencing the goodness of God. Mm. Right. Right. And so I think that's part of for all of us is to get past ourselves, 
get around people that will encourage us mm -hmm. to grow closer to God, that we'd be more kingdom minded. Mm -hmm. We think more like uh, how the Father sees us mm -hmm. and how he cares for the lost. Yeah. Because he, our God, is in the soul winning business. Right. He is. Yeah. He is. It was his mission. It's true. For God so loved the whole world. Mm. Yeah. Right? And he sent his one son. Yeah. His only son. Right. So my mission is called saving the lost. It's not feeding the poor, but saving the lost at any cost. So I mean your mission you said you had a mission statement. So yeah. if I would have a mission statement, it's saving the lost at any cost. And Jesus is in the saving business. And we as Christians also have to be in the saving business. Yes, we do. I mean why else are we here? Yeah. Well, what's the point of calling ourselves Christians if we're not yeah. going to be seeing other people get yeah. come to know Christ? I why mean, why yeah. be it? It's so true. I mean, it's important to maybe self uh, save some elephants somewhere uh, in the jungle or save some trees or monkeys. Um, I mean, it's God creation, but I think God or Jesus cares the most about souls. And this is the, there are some things that are eternal. So souls are eternal. Yeah. The word of God is eternal. Yes. And the things you do for God are eternal as well. So I found out of this three things. Souls, word of God is eternal, and the things you have done for Jesus. So do something what has eternal value. So if you think about what you're doing right now, and you ask yourself, will this matter in a thousand years? Mm. In a thousand years, what I'm doing right now, will this have eternal value or not? That's if a great not, question. And cut it out. I mean, there are people, I totally understand, they have normal job, nine to five job, and you have to provide for yourself. But yes. with that job, you can still serve Jesus in your marketplace. Absolutely. Um, you can s create something with eternal value. And as a business owner, ask yourself, what I'm doing right now, will this matter in a thousand years? Mm. If not, change it. Change it. May, you know, I had someone say to me, um, years ago and it just flipped my perspective which was really good and I, i've shared it with many other people is when you've got uh if people if you tell people you're a christian mm. you have your bible on your desk yeah. there's my you have your picture of jesus or mm -hmm. you have some type of christian paraphernalia around your office right. or in your car mm. or people just know that you are a, a bible believing christian mm. but they never hear you pray for someone who's sick if mm -hmm. they never hear you invite them to church, if they never hear you share a Bible verse, if they never hear you uh, see, they never experience the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life, mm -hmm. love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, mm -hmm. self-control. If yeah. they don't see that, mm -hmm. you're not a Christian in their eyes. You're a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're a hypocrite. Yeah. Because they, if you went and told me you're an evangelist, but I've never seen you evangelize, never heard you evangelize, yeah. you're a liar. Yeah. You're not. Yeah. You just, in your mind, think you are something. It's true. So we are more, we need to be mm. what we actually label ourselves. It's true. We need to be that. If we yeah. put that, oh, I'm a Christian. Yeah. Wonderful. Show me that you're a Christian. Mm. Yeah. How are you a Christian? And you're like, well, the unbelievers don't want to hear any of that. Yes, they do. Mm. Right. Yes, they do. They want to yeah. hear Bible verses so they can make fun of you initially and then think about it later. Right. They want you to say, hey, I see you're going through some hard pain, do you, mm. some situation. Can, do you want me to pray for you? Yeah. And they, they say, you know, but the fact that you did mm. offer makes them think, oh, that's a Christian. Right. That's what a Christian does. Mm. Yeah. They judge us by what we don't do. Mm. Yeah. Like, oh, he said he's that, but he doesn't do any of that. Is mm. he really what he says he is? Mm. No, he's a hypocrite. Yeah. yeah. You follow? That's true. So this is the, the basics of if we take the label of Christ, mm. we need to then represent him well. Yeah. Preach the good news. Mm. Proclaim the good news. Yeah. God so loved the world that he sent his only son that we have mm. forgiveness through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Right. Teach people about the kingdom of God. How does the kingdom of God work? Mm. Yeah. Biblical principles, the truths, mm. and pray for the sick that they might recover. Right. If we do those three things, yeah, you are a Christian. You are a Christ follower. Right. Right. I mean, you just mentioned that we are Christians, and the word Christian, you said, it's mean little Christ. And once Alexander the Great, um, he conquered Asia, and he was inspecting all the soldiers. So they lined up, and there was one guy, um, soldier, and he was dressed very poorly, and he asked him, "What's your name?" And he said, "Alexander." He said, you are Alexander, I'm Alexander the Great. And you are Alexander, either 
you are going to change your clothes. Either you're going to change how you look um, or you change your name. Mm. And that's what Alexander the Great told to another soldier named Alexander. So carry yourself well. Yeah, carry yourself. We as Christians, we have this responsibility. We, we have do. to do what Jesus did, preaching, teaching, healing. And when you mess up, yeah. when you fall, when you yeah. sin, ask for forgiveness. Mm. Yeah. Not only of God, but ask the right. person you offended, right. the person you wronged. Go to them say, look, you know what? It's I responded true. just yeah. out of line. Go, the first people that we need to ask forgiveness of, mm. the first people, is our spouses mm. and our children. Because mm. if we haven't asked our children for mm. forgiveness in a while, we're missing something. Yeah. Right. It, keeps, it keeps distance between us. Mm. So... This is this is how we can actively <laughs> engage as a Christian, mm. and and I know we're running out of time, and and uh, I know I could talk for hours with you, uh, but I pray that this was an encouragement to right. to everyone that's listening. Uh, there's engagement, and and I say all of this because I've practiced all of this. I mm. have failed at all of this, right. but yet I've gotten back up and I've and I've started riding my bike again mm. to keep on trying, yeah. because in the end, it's not about perfection. Right. It's not about perfection. It's about the mm. fact that we're willing to put ourselves out there, make ourselves feel vulnerable for Christ, mm. but then receive the blessing mm. that comes from within. Right. Of feeling It feels good mm. to do what Christ did. Like it feels good to help right. other people. Right. It really, it's very rewarding. Mm. There's not a day I'm sure you go that even your life's being threatened and, and yeah. you're crazy things, you got malaria and you're, you're, you're experiencing the outward like, ah, mm. but inside you're like, this is awesome. Sure, yeah. I like that. <laughs> it is fun. I said last night before we went into the event, I said, hey, after we prayed, we, we were in the car. I said, hey, let's, let's take a minute and pray before mm. what takes place. And then I, we said, I right, said, amen. I said, let's go have some fun. Mm. Right. Let's go have some fun with right. Jesus, you know. And, and it's so much. Wasn't it so rewarding last night? It's true. God really blessed us. I mean, people were healed yesterday at the event. Um, people responded to the mission call. It was amazing. So my goal is always... To inspire other people i don't want to be the big shot i would like to hand over the baton to i'm 36 but i know i have to one there will be one day where i have to hand over the baton to the younger generation it's so true we have to look for someone who um, wants to do the same thing equip the young people and i was told about the revival you're having right now here in texas where i was amazed real. thousands of people are getting saved Yes, that's what we need in Europe as well. I see that in Africa. I see that in Asia. But Europe is kind of in a dry situation. They're turning their backs toward God. Mm -hmm. and There's always a remnant. There's a remnant there. Mm. You're a part of the remnant. Yeah. There is a remnant there in Europe. Mm. Yeah. In the darkest places, the light shines the brightest. Mm. So don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up. People gave up on America years ago. Mm. But Christ hasn't given up on the that's nations. True. His that's heart true. is for the nations. Mm. Restore them back to the Father. Mm. Right? seed of Abraham, the promises of Abraham, Amen. the whole earth will be blessed. Mm. And so we're all experiencing it and, it and it's going to continue. How can people connect with you? I have a website. It's called savingthelost.com. Um, you can go through the website. There are also on the website, there are some social media links or you, just, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. So if you type in Valdi Pershi or the easiest way would maybe go to my website, savingthelost.com. Okay, great. Um, there you find some videos and um, yeah, please write me. I would love to stay in contact. And that's how we connected. We connected over Instagram. I wrote you. I was inspired by your story and then you wrote me back. And it I was so amazed that, um, yeah, that's kind of a God connection. It is a God connection. And um, now I'm here. I'm in I, Texas. I, yeah, I'm in Texas. I, I said, come out of Germany. Yes, come to Texas. And I he goes, Germany, yes. I love it. I love it when people are available. Sometimes people think, oh, this person is so distant, so far away. This man of God, you cannot contact him. Uh, but uh, we should be available. We should um, be like Jesus. Jesus talked to every person. and He did. Yeah, so reach out to me. I would love to hear your story. I would love to pray for you. And yeah, This is exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I just know God's going to continue doing some great things. And, and, and just to be part of it. Mm. I'm an average guy. Mm. Just to be part of it. Right. I just want to be part of it. Mm. God here at my hands up in the air. Yeah. I want to be in the game. Mm. I don't want to sit on the bench looking at everybody else doing their work. Right. Will you put me in? Mm. He goes, all right, well, you're going to step in, mm -hmm. put your boat in the water, mm. put your car in, in gear, mm. let the Holy Spirit direct your sails, dream with God, yeah. dream with him, yeah. dream, 
hmm. spiritual dream with right. him and he will show you what he has in store for you. Right, right. And that is so rich. It's so yeah. true. Yeah. So you're doing that. I'm doing it. Praise God. And it, and and uh, a great story is being written. Yeah. Praise that God. I pray that our grandchildren mm. will want to read. Yeah. Can I talk to just two minutes for the listeners? Is it OK? So if you're here listening to the podcast and you're a business owner, God can use you mightily um, in uh, the mission field. So you might be called to become a hand missionary. So don't think you are less than someone else. God is going to use you. You can bless other people. You can support missions and thousands of people will get saved. Amen. So be a blessing for other people. Be a blessing for the foot missionaries, for the hand missionaries. And maybe you're listening to the podcast and you are not saved. Um, I would like to say to you, Jesus loves you. He takes care for you. Jesus died on the cross for you. He, Jesus came 2000 years ago to this world. He lived a perfect life and then um, he healed many people. He was teaching, preaching and healing. And then he went to the cross because we are all sinners. And the good news is he rose from the grave and he is alive. And the question is, what is your response? We have to make a decision. Either we are going to reject Jesus or we're going to accept him. The Bible says there are two, um, two places in eternity. One place is called heaven and the other place is called hell. And we have to choose where we are going to spend eternity. If you are not sure where you're going to spend eternity, choose Jesus, mm. choose life, yes. choose be to become a child of God. You can just pray a simple prayer with me. If you're listening to me, just close your eyes wherever you are and say, Jesus, I'm coming to you. I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the grave. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm a child of God. I belong to Jesus. And Jesus belongs to me. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we would love to hear from you. Um, write us, contact us. If you gave your life to Jesus, just write us. Um, we would like to hear your testimony. God bless you. Hey, guys. Uh, thank you for listening to today's episode. Uh, if you would like, subscribe and ring the bell. Share this with a friend as well. Uh, we're going to include uh, Valdi's con uh, connections and contacts there uh, in our, our title. Uh, thank you, guys. We love you all. Go do something for Jesus today.